the attorney died with your brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Introducing Godly Fear. Godly fear is such an important topic and it's talked about throughout the Bible. And all we could do in one session is uh, just look at the um, just a few verses just to get an understanding of the fear of the Lord. There, This is probably the most important aspect of a spiritual life and it has more benefits associated with it than any other spirit. Uh, any other aspect of our spiritual life. So it's very, very important. And uh, I, I want us to just try to understand what the fear of the Lord is. I believe it's putting God number one, making, giving him the preeminence. And uh, well, that's exactly what the first commandment is. Uh, you shall have no, no other God before, before me. You. And that's making him, giving him the preeminence. And I believe that is the fear of God. But we'll look at it from a lot of different aspects because it's a, it's a complex um, uh, concept. And uh, it's easy for us to say we have the fear of God. That's very easy. But when you get to the depths of it, you, you see there's a lot more. Uh, to it and a lot of people are not walking in the benefits of the fear of the Lord so uh, we'd have to question are they, are they really walking in the fear of God uh, the fear of God is uh, just very basic uh, to all of the fundamental elements of, of the gospel it uh, begins with uh, the fear of the Lord. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Knowledge begins with the fear of the mm, Lord. Amen. And, and, and just everything grows out of the fear of the Lord. And, and even people uh, may want to hear about the word of God, but they don't learn if they don't have the fear of God. It, it takes that fear of God is a basic thing that we need in, in all of our lives. And what was interesting to me and caused me to really key in on this topic for this week is that uh, even Jesus Christ himself, uh, who was God, and he's always been God, he is God. In the beginning, he was the God, he was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And, and so he's always been God and, and he was manifested on the earth in flesh. And, and we know him as Jesus, but he's always mm -hmm. been the word of God. And he needed the fear of God. And not only did he need the fear of God, he, he needed it to be imparted into his life. And he needed to be taught about the fear of God. Now, Jesus is not only our Savior and Lord, but he's also mm -hmm. our model. Mm -hmm. uh, the way he walked on the earth, uh, what was it that he was doing? And the fear of the Lord was very important to him. And if he was God and he had to learn the fear of God, then it's something that we need to do. We can't think, well, I fear God and, and that's enough. It's much deeper, much, much deeper than just simply saying, I fear God. Uh, it is, does he have the preeminence in your life? That, that's a good indication that you fear God if uh, if he has the preeminence in your life. Now, I, I want to just start with a few uh, verses and concepts to try to understand it, and then we'll I'll have Sherry read in a few minutes. I'll have her read a, a, some verses. But uh, Psalm uh, 19, verse 23 says that the fear of the Lord leads to life. Ooh, okay, amazing. so in order for us to have life, we, we've got to start with the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus also addressed that topic in uh, Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, and he told us that we had to make a choice. He said, uh, choose the narrow way mm -hmm. and uh, not the broad way. The broad way mm -hmm. Is a broad gate and it's a broad pathway and a lot of people find it. That's where most of the people are. They've gone through the broad gate and the broad uh, path and uh, it leads to destruction. Mm. But you've got to go on the 
through narrow. the narrow okay. gate and on the narrow path. And that one is the one that leads to life. And, and so the fear of the Lord, see, is going to put us on a path. Mm -hmm. But it's not the Broadway. It's not where all the our friends are on. It's on the narrow way. I, I like to think about it in these terms. It's like we're walking uh, on a, 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 a board, a, a beam, uh, and we're walking through life on that beam. And what keeps us on that beam, that's the narrow way, is the fear of the Lord. Because when we fear the Lord, we're not going to commit evil. We're going to, not going to do evil. We're going to stay there on that narrow uh, pathway. And, and if, we, uh, if we're not concerned about that, not concerned about the fear of the Lord, well, we'll fall off of that pathway. It's very narrow. And uh, that's what keeps us up there. Uh, we don't do uh, evil. Uh, we don't uh, lie. We don't cheat. We don't steal. Mm. Why? Because we fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Because if we didn't fear the Lord, then we could do any one of those things. That's we right. Could, that's right. We could uh, cheat, or lie. Mm. Uh, uh, Commit murder, adultery. Adultery, anything. And that would put take us off of that narrow way, the narrow way. Uh, that's where we're where we need to be is on that narrow way, and that's the only path that leads to life. Ooh, hallelujah! And, it, and the only thing that keeps us on that narrow way is the fear of the Lord. Now we can think about that in Acts chapter five. There were uh, there was a man and woman. His name was Ananias, and his wife's name was Sapphira. Sapphira and uh, they had sold some land. So they were going to church services. They were giving money uh, in their church services, probably a lot of money, because they said, this is how much we sold the property for. And, and so they had a, a lot of money that they were giving to the church services. So they were important people in the church services. But what was interesting is that they told a lie about how much they sold the land for. Or, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. Woo, woo. And why would they lie to the Holy Spirit? Because they had no fear of God. Mm, they did not reverence him. They didn't didn't have a fear of God. And so rather than staying on that narrow way, they fell off. It's like falling off into the into the swamp with the alligators. They're going to be destroyed. Mm. <laughs> and so they died. Ananias and Sapphira, they died because they had lied, because they were lying to the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the fear of God. The fear of God would have kept them on that narrow way that would have led to life, but they were destroyed mm. because they lied to the Holy Spirit. And then something very ha important happened in Acts chapter 5, verse 11. The great fear fell on the mm. whole church. So up until that point in time, they didn't have the fear of God. But when those people died, from lying to the Holy Spirit, that's when great fear, fear. came on the whole church. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we know they didn't have any fear. They didn't have the fear of God or they would not have lied because lying is one of those sins. And because any sin is going to get you off of that narrow way. Jesus said, get on that narrow way, go through that narrow gate, stay on that narrow path and it'll lead you to life. Okay, so now I'm going to ask Sherry to start reading some verses. We're going to start here in Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. And what I want you to see in verse 1, this is talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's talking about Jesus. And then it says, Jesus uh, needed the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, but Jesus was God. He was the mm -hmm. Son of God. And I mean, there's three people in the Three persons in the Godhead the is the Father, and Jesus, the Son of God, he was God, he is God, will hell always be God, and the Holy Spirit. So he had all three of them. But Jesus 
is God, but he needed the Holy Spirit. He needed every aspect of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And, and so I'm going to ask you to read. First, we'll go start with one and two. Okay. Then a shoot will spring up from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. That's Jesus talking mm. about. Jesus is coming. He's going to be the Messiah. Yeah. He's coming. Okay. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Okay. Let's just pause here. We'll, we'll read okay. verse three in a minute. Well, what I want you to see here, there are seven aspects of the Holy Spirit. Uh, th these are not separate spirits. It's just the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in these mm -hmm. seven different mm -hmm. ways. Okay, now we can refer to a Revelation and it talks about there's seven fiery lamps, which are the seven spirits. But those, and those are the spirit of the Holy Spirit, but those are not separate. It's just different aspects or different facets of the Holy Spirit. So it's very important to look at these seven uh, aspects of the Holy Spirit, forms of the Holy Spirit that can be manifested in each of our lives. And, and the first one is the Spirit of the Lord. Now that's that's the umbrella that covers these others, that, that encompasses all of these other things. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit of the Lord. And, and it's like in uh, Acts chapter 13, uh, there were some men praying and uh, and they heard the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit began to speak. And he said, separate unto me uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work that I have called them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who's speaking? Well, it's the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, I. So I am, I am the Spirit of the Lord and I I uh, have called Barnabas and Saul. So when you hear the Holy Spirit speaking in that first voice, that is the Spirit of the Lord, and that's the umbrella that includes these other spirits. So the Spirit of the Lord is the overall umbrella, but it includes these six other aspects of the Holy Spirit, but all together, uh, they are the Holy Spirit. It's just one Holy Spirit. So second see, is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Now, we remember that a few weeks ago, we prayed, mm -hmm. uh, we saw from Ephesians 1, verses 17 and 18, it, we can pray to receive the spirit mm -hmm. of wisdom and revelation. and revelation. So, we can receive each of these different aspects, and we all need them, all of them, mm -hmm. in our lives. And, and so, they don't just uh, automatically uh, uh, appear in your life, uh, there are some things we have to do, and I'm going to talk about those things in a moment, but I want you to remember that we've already prayed that we have the spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and, and revelation. revelation. Okay, so we see the spirit of uh, wisdom and, and understanding, and we also have the spirit of counsel, counsel and, and strength. strength. There are another translation that says might, and then the spirit of knowledge, and then it says, and then the, the fear, fear of the, the Lord. Lord. But but that's also an aspect of the Holy Spirit. So it's a spirit of the fear of the Lord. Okay. So we've got these seven aspects. We know from Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the fear mm. of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. So you cannot have wisdom or knowledge without the fear of the Lord. It all starts there with fear of the Lord that we put the Lord first Ooh, in our yeah. life. Amen. Amen. Before our business, before our wife, before our husband, before our spouse, mm -hmm. before our children. But the number one thing in our lives should be God. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Number one. Okay, so... First of all, we have to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And, and there's a lot of people that, let's say, get educated. They go to university and they, and they get these diplomas, but they don't have a fear of the Lord. So they don't have his wisdom. They don't have the spiritual wisdom. They don't have the spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So people get really uh, 
messed up if they don't have the fear of the Lord. That's right. Because they're looking for education and not the wisdom of God. Or they're looking for knowledge, uh, but not the knowledge of God. Okay, so there's seven aspects, and all seven of these were imparted to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And even though he was God, he had to receive this impartation of the Holy Spirit in all seven aspects. And then let's look at verse three. This is very interesting. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see. Whew, listen to that nor make decisions by what his ears hear. Okay. Woo, this Lord. is Jesus. He's still talking about Jesus. Mm. And his, his delight is in the fear of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And, hallelujah. and so hallelujah. if he is our model, if he's the one we're supposed to model our life after, then we are to delight in the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Glory mm -hmm. to God. So I, this is exciting to me. We need to know about the fear of the Lord. We need to be operating in the fear of the Lord. And that's what this message is about today. How can we operate in the fear of the Lord? The second passage that I want to share to read is from Job uh, 28, verse 28. So it's easy to remember. Job 28, 28. 28. It says, and to mankind, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so the fear of the Lord is going to give you wisdom, and it's going to keep you from doing evil. Keep doing evil. And, and that's what we were talking about a while ago. It keeps you on that narrow path that you don't get off of it. Because if you, if you don't have the fear of God, then you will do evil. But if you have the fear of God, you will not do evil. You will not lie. You will not cheat. You will not steal. You'll not do any sin if you have the fear of the Lord. And what keeps you from doing the sin? It's the fear mm -hmm. of the Lord. And so that's, he says, that's wisdom. It's wisdom not to sin. And it's understanding not to sin. Glory to God. Okay, so let's go on to the next uh, passage. I have two other passages. One in Psalm 25 and then Psalm uh, Psalm 34. 34. So let's do Psalm 25. And let's just look at this. These are about the fear of the Lord, trying to understand the fear of the Lord. Who is the person <laughs> who fears the Lord? Question mark. He will instruct him in the way he should choose. His soul will dwell in prosperity. Woo! Hallelujah. And his descendants will inherit the land. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him. Okay, let's look at oh. it. There's so much here. For one thing, God's going to instruct those people who fear the Lord. See, there's a lot of people trying to teach people mm -hmm. the word of God, but they don't fear the Lord. And if they don't fear the Lord, then they cannot be taught. God only teaches those who fear the Lord. And he teaches them what to choose, how to choose, mm -hmm. how to make good choices. See, if you don't have the fear of the Lord, you can make choices that will lead you to destruction. Mm -hmm. You can make choices that will lead you to sin. But if you are taught about the fear of the Lord, then you're going to make good decisions mm, and hallelujah. stay away from evil. Now, what, what's interesting about this is that God had to teach Jesus about the fear of the Lord. He was God. He is God. Yeah. He's always been God, but he hallelujah. still had to be taught the fear of the Lord. And that's, that's what we're doing today. We're teaching about the fear of the Lord because mm -hmm. we all need to be taught about the fear of the Lord and about the choices. See, this is a we we've got to fear the Lord first before we can make good choices. So there's really four points I want to make. Oh, well, well, before you move on, before you move on, okay. <laughs> this this verse right here, verse 13, it says, his soul will dwell or live in prosperity. And that is your 
your mind, your will, your attitude, your emotions. Uh, they're going to prosper. They're going to they're going to be they're going to dwell there. They're going to live there. Uh, you know, if you reverence the Lord, if you put him uh, number one in your life. So, so we're beginning to see some benefits of fearing the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's going to teach us. We're going to live prosperously. Amen. We're going to stay away from evil. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's four points I want to make. And, and, and uh, the first one is right here in this passage. And so we have to choose. So there's four things yeah, that I want yeah. to talk about. How can we improve uh, or increase our fear of the Lord? First of all, we have to make a choice mm -hmm. to fear the Lord. That's number one. And, and you see it right here in the passage. When, when we fear the Lord, then he's going to help us make the right choices. He's going to instruct us on how to make the right choices. So that first point, if you want to increase in the fear of the Lord, we all need to increase in the fear of the Lord. You have to choose. Also, you have to be taught. Mm -hmm. See, this mm -hmm. says God's going to teach you. He will instruct you. Yeah. He's going to instruct you. And, and you know what's going to happen is that your children will be taught in the fear of the Lord yes. and will receive benefits. When you choose the fear of the Lord, even your children will benefit Hallelujah. from you choosing the fear of the Lord. Amen. Now I've got Amen. this next passage, and this is Psalm 34. Let's look at it again. Okay. It's about the fear of the Lord. We'll see some benefits here again. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the person who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Question mark. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. There's a lot in this passage, but we have to be taught. Again, it talks about, I'm going to teach you about the fear of the Lord. And, and you'll have a long life. You, you wonder why yeah. people are dying too early? Well, they don't fear the Lord. Because right. he said, if you fear the Lord, you're going to live a long time. You're going to be yeah. prosperous. And your children are going to be taught. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're going to have... And length. great will be the peace of your children. Great will peace. Amen. Amen. I had that on my refrigerator for years. For years until it, worn out, it was worn out. And that was that all of my children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of my children. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay, so I, I've talked about uh, three uh, three of the four points I want to make. And, and for, first of all, we have to choose. We have to receive an impartation. That's what Jesus said. Ooh. He received yeah. an impartation. Mm -hmm. We have to be taught. And we have to pray about the fear of God. We have to, but remember from Ephesians 1, uh, verses 17 and 18, that we can pray to receive the spirit of wisdom. We can pray to receive all seven of these aspects, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of uh, counsel and might or strength. And the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So we can pray for all of those. And, and now here's a benefit I want you to see. And, and uh, this is uh, coming close to the end of this message. I want to, the Sherry to show you uh, Ephesians, I mean, Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, 7 and 8. This, this is, is from the New King James Version. This is uh, about Jesus. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Okay. So oh, and let me just say that the, the word suffered here. In, in the Greek means allows the access of the spirit into your life. It doesn't mean disease or cancer or any type of, of illness. 
or any type of accident or that type of suffering. That word means that we allow the Holy Spirit access into our life. Okay. Hallelujah. So what this is, passage is talking about is Jesus praying when he was on this earth. Mm -hmm. Now remember, when he was on the earth, he was still God. He was the son of God. He had been God. He was God. He is God. He will always be God. He was praying. And it says why his prayers were always answered. You know what it was? It says right here in this passage. Mm -hmm. Why was Jesus always heard and his prayers always answered? Sherry, because you... of his godly fear. Because he feared God. Mm -hmm. His prayers were answered Woo! because he feared God. Now he, but he was God. You'd say, well, why did he even have to pray? He was God. Well, he prayed. And the only reason his prayers were answered was because he had godly fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear of God. That's why his prayers were answered. Amen. Now, what did he wind up praying? Right there in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, not my will. See, here's no. the fear of God. Yeah. Not my will, but your, your will, will be done. Oh, Lord. Regardless of what I suffer on the cross, it's not my will, but it's your will. Uh, I, so I'm willing to go and do whatever you want me to do because I have the fear of the Lord. Amen. Do you want your prayers answered? Mm, yes. You need to have the fear, fear of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Okay, so let's go back through it. How do we get the fear of the Lord? Number one, mm -hmm. we have to choose to have the fear of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, once we choose the fear of the Lord, then it will help us make good choices. And uh, number two, we have to pray about the fear of the Lord. So this is a prayer you don't just pray one time. You can pray it often. You, uh, you know, Ephesians 1, mm -hmm. uh, the prayer that Paul prayed, and which included the spirit of wisdom, but it could be include all of those aspects. Uh, I prayed it for days, weeks, and months. I prayed it over myself. I prayed it over, I mm -hmm. prayed it over you. But we need to be praying for all of those aspects. So number one, choose the fear of the Lord. Pray for the cheer fear of the Lord. Number three, you need to receive an impartation of the fear of the Lord. This comes from the Holy Spirit, but it can come through people. It come, can come through people who have the fear of the Lord. Mm. Glory to God. Choose. Pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Th these are these What's are the number important. four? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing them down. All right. We choose, we pray, we receive from the Holy Spirit. Give an importation. What's the fourth one? Uh, okay. Uh, come to it. Second, oh, second. yeah. Let's see. I have to choose. I have to be taught. That's, uh -huh. that's, a, to that's be the fourth taught. one. Okay. You have to be taught. So you have to choose mm -hmm. or instructed. Be taught. Be taught. Be taught. First, you have to choose <laughs> that you want the fear of the Lord. Number two, you pray. You pray for the fear of the Lord. Number three, you receive, receive an impartation. impartation. Now, how are you going to receive an impartation? Well, I, I su suggest you be around people who have the, the fear, fear of the Lord. Lord. Amen. And, and let them impart into and you. And let that four, be taught come about, upon you about the fear of the Lord. So that's what I've done tonight. I have been teaching you this concept of the fear of the Lord. It's very complex, but it's very important. Everything comes out of the fear of the Lord. It, it's the manifestation of the first commandment, which is to have no other God mm. before God. That is, you have to have the fear of the Lord to fulfill the first commandment of the law. Of course, we're not under the law, but still that applies. We give him the preeminence. That's what Colossians says. Yeah. Give him the preeminence. Right. That's the same thing. Don't have any gods before God. That's the fear of God. Give him 
the number one position in your life every day, every morning. Yeah. At all time. Number one. He's number one. That's mm -hmm. Colossians. Mm -hmm. That's New Testament. Colossians. He, he has the preeminence in all things. So there the four points are. And we all need it. Our life depends on it. Our prosperity, our health, our, our peace, everything in our life depends on it. Our children will prosper. Our children yes, will receive mercy. If you choose the fear of, of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. Yes. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, you know, verse 13 of Psalms 34, it says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. And there have been times that literally I was I was going to say something out of my mouth and all of a sudden I felt my 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 lips closed and it was literally the Holy Spirit kept me from speaking out what I was going to speak out which was against the word of God and and I believe that that the Holy Spirit impartation, uh, that desire that I have to fear the Lord, kept me from speaking out that evil. That because He told me years ago, on a plane, I was going uh, from Dallas to Midland, Texas, and the Holy Spirit said, "From this day forward, watch what you say, because your words will be with power." And so. We can either speak good or we can speak evil. And this is to, to keep our tongue from speaking evil. And the Holy Spirit can help us to do that. And that's part of that impartation Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, and this is something that this is this message tonight is a foundational message. It's like faith. It's like a message on love. It's like a message on forgiveness. It's a foundational message that we, when we fear the Lord, then he is going to help us do what we need to do in this life. And he's going to help us to prosper. Hallelujah. And those four things again, uh, brother, I wrote them down. I don't know if you wrote them down or not, but I'm going to meditate on these. And that is, we're going to choose, we're going to choose, I'm going to fear the Lord. Uh, God's going to be number one, uh, not my job, not my family, uh, not what I want to do, but God is first place. I'm going to fear him. I'm going to choose that. And then number two, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that that wisdom and knowledge and understanding and revelation will come to me. And the, fear of the Lord. and the fear of the Lord. Number three, I'm going to receive the impartation. And right now, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> I ask the Holy Spirit to impart into all of us, yes. every single one of us, yes, Holy Spirit impart in us the fear of the Lord, yes, reverence for the Lord yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Yes, and we're going to be willing to be taught and I believe that this group is certainly um, for well over how, how many years have we been doing this too? Uh, anyway, I believe that um, Lucy says God is first place. Pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen, Amen. Lucy. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, but this is this is something that we 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 are learning. We are we are growing in the Lord, and and that is to us that's so exciting, uh, just to to grow in the Lord and and be what He wants us to be. Hallelujah! You know, each day is a is a day of of blessings, is and each day that the Lord gives us is a gift, and and I found out that. You know, very um, uh, emphatically, uh, you know, when I got that call on December the, the 30th, uh, it was 1990, 1992. 
at four o'clock in the afternoon that the my main doctor uh, said, you know, Miss White, uh, there's three doctors on your case, and we've all agreed, you know, that you have terminal cancer of the thyroid, and it's he said it's called medullary carcinoma, and he said uh, it moves very quickly and very fast, and we're going to try to operate, but you have six months to live. And so when you, when the Lord gives you a miracle in your life and when they went in there and they found no cancer, hallelujah. And, and I knew that I was, I was alive and, and I was to live a life that was pleasing unto the Lord. Everything else faded away. Everything else faded away. And I knew that every single day, every birthday, Every single birthday, you know, some people say, oh, I've got another birthday coming up. You know, I'm a year older. And I say, praise the Lord. On every single birthday, I thank the Lord over and over and over again that I have another birthday to celebrate because I know that he is my God and I fear him and I reverence him. And that, that's what keeps me from from saying bad words and 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 getting um, angry and and that's what keeps me uh, uh, loving people that are unlovely. Uh, that's what helps me uh, to do what God wants me to do is uh, the the fear of the Lord.